Christians believe in Abraham, Jews believe in Abraham, but nobody believes in Abraham like the Muslims do. Nobody. We have more love for him and more loyalty to him and more celebration of him than any other religion. We have the most claim to Ibrahim. And in the first row of my audience, we were a rabbi, a preacher, there were a lot of the, all these people were sitting there. But I was particularly interested in the rabbi. Because for the rabbis, the two most important figures in their religious tradition are Abraham and Moses. Ibrahim and Musa alayhim salam. So I was talking about Abraham and I said, listen, nobody else has a convention every year where millions of people gather to celebrate the legacy of this man like we do. Which, which convention am I talking about? Hajj. Nobody comes even close to making that struggle. That is even mentioned in the Bible. All of those struggles are even mentioned in the Bible. But no Jewish community and no Christian community comes even close to celebrating the legacy of that man the way the Muslims do every single year. On that note, later on I made friends with the rabbi. Because when I was giving that talk, he was in tears the entire time. And we made friends later on. And I shared some things with him because I had been studying how the, the Jews st look at Ibrahim alayhi salam. I asked him, if you take all of the lessons of Abraham, what is one thing you learn from Abraham? What is the big lesson you learn from Abraham? By the way, the big lesson we learn from Ibrahim, I already told you, Islam. Quran keeps associating what word with Ibrahim? Islam, which means the big lesson we learn from Ibrahim alayhi salam is complete and absolute submission to the command of Allah. Allah asks, you do it. That is the lesson from Ibrahim alayhi salam. Not questioning Allah, trusting Allah completely and falling in submission before Allah. That is what the Muslim learns from Ibrahim alayhi salam. So I asked the rabbi and I was expecting the same answer. Because it's the same, you know, this, these books were also revelation. How much could they have changed it? And something as basic as the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And you know what he told me? Amazing. He told me we learn from the legacy of Abraham that we can question God. And I said, what? Who? Say that again? You can question, where did you learn that from? Which Abraham is this? And they said, well, you know what happened? The, you know, and he tried, he gave me this whole analogy. He gave me the analogy of a child. When a child is very young, and you tell the child, sit down. Then the child sits down. When you tell the child, time to wake up, the child wakes up. And the child is more and more obedient to the father. But as a child grows older, he starts asking questions. Sit down, but I want to stand up. Time to wake up, I want to keep sleeping. Then the father says, you have to go to this college. He says, no, I don't want to go to accounting. I want to go to engineering school. It makes more sense. I'm better at math. I'm better at this. I'm better at science. He starts arguing with his father. And the rabbi tells me, when the son starts arguing with his father, the father is actually very proud of him because the son has become so mature and he understands the outside world that he can talk back to his father. This means that the son has become more and more knowledgeable. So you know, the same way, Abraham later on in his life, when the angels came, you know, one of the, one of the stories in the life of Ibrahim is angels came and they were going to destroy the nation of Lut. But before they destroyed the nation of Lut, they stopped at the house of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And even the Quran describes Yujadilu la fi qawmi Lut. That he started arguing about the nation of Lut. Are you going to kill all of them? And he started negotiating with the angels. So he says, look see, this is an example. That here we learn that Abraham was actually mature now that he was arguing with God. And that's what we learn. And that's why every time there's a command in the Torah, we actually, us rabbis, we argue with it and say, well, does that really make sense? And that's why we have several. And he, I didn't make this up. I would not have believed it if somebody told me. I heard it from the rabbi's mouth myself. And I asked him a question. I was like, okay, so your argument is as you get older, you get more mature. And as you get more mature, you start disagreeing more. Is that your argument? He says, yes. I said, fine. But then many years later, after, this, after the story of Lut, where he argued, argued with God, after that he had a child. After that Abraham had a child. And God told him to sacrifice his child, didn't he? Now Ibrahim alayhi salam, according to you, he's ready to argue on behalf of some other nation. But when Allah says to him, you're going to kill your own child, he says, okay, fine. 
He just does, he doesn't argue. Does he argue? No. And that happened later. But I would say, if, according to you, if it happened later, he should have been even more mature, and he should turn back to Allah and argued even more. And he just smiled at me. There was no argument after that. 